Hi. I've come to ask about the English courses you run for international students. Oh, right. I assume you're a student at the university. Yes, I've just started. Okay. Well, we've got a range of courses. It depends what you think you need and how much.、Oh. Um, we can't run everything at the same time, though. So, for example, in this first term, we are just doing a writing course. I see. That sounds quite useful. What else is there?、Um, some of the courses only run for single terms, and we tend to focus on what students have difficulty with. That means we don't usually do speaking courses, but next term you can do listening.、Oh. That'll help you with lectures and things. Our provision is all based on what the majority of our international students need. So, is everything term based? There's nothing that you run all year. Well, let's have a look. Yes, there is a class for vocabulary and grammar every term. That's for everybody, but it's split into three or four levels. And what about in the holidays? We don't do anything during the winter or spring break.、Mm. But over the summer, there's just general classes because that's what most students want.、Mm. A bit of everything.、Mm -hmm. Okay, quite a variety then.、Hmm. I'll、uh, have a think about what I really need because I haven't got much time. Do you have about twenty students in each class, the same as our science seminars? We try to keep it at about twelve, and certainly not more than fifteen.、Mm -hmm. It's important for language classes. They're very different from your normal courses. Right, and how much are the classes? The rate varies depending on how many hours you attend, but you shouldn't have to pay. Usually, the department will fund you and even sort out which classes you need.、Oh, brilliant! <laughs> It would be quite useful for me to have a certificate to take back to my country. Do you put us in for exams? Yes, but we don't like them to clash with your main course exams in June, so we run them in May. Oh, that leaves you time for revision. Do I have to sign up for something now? I'm not quite sure what I want. Classes haven't quite started yet, so you've got time to decide what you do. All we insist is that you sign up before week five. That gives you about three weeks to decide. Okay. You now have fifteen seconds to read questions eight to ten. Then, when you've made up your mind, you need to come back here to the administration office to enroll. What do I need to bring with me when I enroll? My identity card, I guess. Yes, or your passport. Uh huh. Then you'll be given a registration form, which you'll have to show to the teacher when you have your first class. Okay. And、um, should I ask my tutor about which classes I should do then? Yes. Then you get a note from him and give that to the desk when you register. Can I use the computers here as well? Yes, you'll be given a password when you go to your first class. So remember to bring a disk with you to save your work on, as you won't be allowed to save it on the hard drive. Okay. Will I need anything else? Dictionary. We've got loads of those here that you can borrow. But you'll need a notebook as we don't provide paper or files. Okay. Thanks. That is the end of part one. Part two. You are going to hear an interviewer who is interviewing Alan. He made a great discovery of Mungo National Park. First, look at questions eleven to fifteen.
As you listen to the first part of the interview, answer questions 11 to 15. An event occurred in 1996 over a period of three days that attracted considerable attention at the time and led to a new find in Mungo National Park, which is the focal point of the Willandra Lakes World Heritage Area in New South Wales, Australia. I talked to Alan Moore, the organizer of this trip, about his experience. Alan, What was the purpose of your trip? Well, as you know, I love the outback and lead tours of people wanting to go into more remote parts of the country. However, I thought it was time for me too to have a holiday. So I packed up my family and we went to Mungo National Park. Why did you choose this location? It holds a record of Aboriginal life stretching back over 40,000 years. And of course, I wanted my young kids to be amazed by the main feature of the park. The remarkable Walls of China, as they're called, where wind and water erosion have exposed this long history. I see. What was the weather like? It was unusual for that time of year. The rain was just one continual downpour after another. We were always soaked to the skin. So we decided to cut our holiday short and only stayed three days in the end. However, it was eventful. The obvious problem was to get back to the nearest town, a small place called Boronga. But the dirt roads out there are always impassable after rain, so we settled down for a long, wet wait in the park. We didn't really mind because the scenery was so interesting. However, the kids wandered away without our noticing, and eventually we realized they must be lost. So we used our two way radio to contact the park rangers and the police, and a helicopter was sent. Luckily, the kids were found within a few hours, but they'd made an important discovery. Now look at questions 16 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 16 to 20. So, the trip was also eventful for another reason, wasn't it? Yes, yes. They led us to some ancient Aboriginal art. The kids had taken shelter in a very small, low cave that was difficult to see from the outside. We were lucky to have another family camping in our location. When they heard us calling the kids, they immediately helped us search for them, and as the hours went by, they also provided us with much needed support and encouragement. We really appreciated their help. And as we were already soaked through after looking for the kids for a couple of hours, they even made sure we had enough dry clothes to wear. The park ranger managed to get through to us to lead the search, and when the helicopter pilot notified us by two way radio that he'd seen the children but was unable to land nearby, we were able to eventually find them very excited about what was in their little cave. And what did you think of their cave? Well, after squeezing in, I must say I was impressed. And managed to take a few photos of it before we left. There were many faint markings and dots on the wall. It was difficult to tell what they represented because they were so small, but people from the museum who have since visited there said the markings were similar to some other findings in the area and later confirmed they were very old. Although it's now a protected site, the children like to call it their cave and are allowed to visit it when a ranger can go with them. Thank you, Alan. If you go to Mungo National Park, You can see the entrance to the cave and some of Alan's photos at the ranger's station. Alan continues to lead tour groups in the outback, and if you want further information. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three.
you are going to hear a conversation among Dr. Archer, Larry, and Judy talking about the new term. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and complete the notes and table below. Okay, everybody. Welcome back to the new term. I hope you've all had a good break and that you're keen to start on your research project. What I'd like to do this morning is to give you a chance to ask questions about the project. Requirements, ways of approach, how to get help if you need it. Today is informal. It may be already written on paper, but it's nice to have an opportunity to have it confirmed. So, any questions? Dr. Archer, is there a confirmed due date yet to hand it in? Yes, I can now confirm that it's 16th of July, not 15th as first advised, OK? And what about the word limit? Well, there is some flexibility on this, but in general it's eight to 10,000 words. Ah, I see. And you can choose your topic, anything from years two and three. Yes? I still can't work out what I want to do it on. Who, um... In that case, you should see your course tutor to agree on your final topic. And you should also be aware that there is special assistance available at the library on library resources if you need help on that. Can I just check on the deadlines for everything? Certainly. Look, let me write it on the board when each stage should be completed. First of all, you've got to work on your basic project outline, and that's due in to your course tutor by 21st of February, which is only two weeks away, so you need to get cracking on that. Do we have to include a full reference list by then too? No, your reference list is due on 6th of April, which is one week later, so you have time to discuss this with your tutor. And when should we be doing the research? Well, that's over a one-month period, essentially April to May. And the write-up? Well, you need to do quite a bit of research before you get going on your writing. So that's really May to July, with a due date for handing in on the 16th. Any more questions? Now look at questions 27 to 30. Listen to the second part of the talk and match A, B, or C with questions 27 to 30. Well, sir, just some advice, really. It's about the research approach. Would you advise us to use some case studies? Well, Larry, I know these can be difficult to arrange sometimes, but I really feel they are of great benefit in this subject. You can always talk to your tutor if you're having difficulty. Yes? I've looked over some previous research projects that are in the library. Is that a good idea, sir? I heard. OK. I don't think you should go through them in detail, especially at this early stage, or you might end up being influenced by them more than you realise. But yes, it really is about the best guide you can have to what's required in the... to what's expected in this type of project. Sorry, Judy, I butted in on you. That's all right. It's just that I noticed one project was a joint one. They work together as a pair. Is that a good idea? Yes, I remember that paper. Working in a pair can have some advantages. But to be frank, this is meant to be an individual project, so it's best to work on your own. About using subjects, is it OK if we use family members? Your own relatives? I don't see why not. They probably offer some advantages in terms of availability. Although you need to guard against possible effects on your research outcomes. So, you can if you want. Perhaps you should discuss this with your tutor if you plan to use relatives, 
so you can approach it in the best way. Okay, okay thanks. thanks. Okay then. Well, I hope we've been able to sort out a few things. You're welcome to see me at any time, or drop me a note if you have any more queries. Fine, Fine thanks. thanks. That is the end of part three. Now you have half a minute to check your answers. You are going to hear the first part of a lecture on American culture and American customs. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Well, last week we talked about American education, and today I'm going to discuss American values, characteristics, personal habits and courtesies. Keep in mind as you are listening to this lecture that your goal is to understand, not to emulate or judge. Just briefly... I'd like to mention that there is a remarkable ethnic diversity in the United States. The population of the USA is about 260 million. 73% of the American population is white. 12% is African American. 8% Hispanic. 3% Asian or Pacific Islanders. And less than 1% American Indian or Eskimo. Many Americans resent generalizations being made about them because Americans see themselves as very unique and individualistic. On the other hand, Americans tend to lump foreigners together into one lot and condescendingly view foreigners as people who are not as intelligent or sensible as Americans. Despite Americans' dislike of generalizations and their ethnocentric point of view, it becomes evident that they are indeed American. Americans value individualism, independence, informality, directness, punctuality, achievement and competition. Individualism is probably the most highly esteemed value in the American culture and an important key to understanding American behaviour. In the historical development of the country, individuality was crucial for survival. If you asked Americans to characterise the ideal person, they would probably use adjectives such as autonomous, independent and self-reliant. Persons tend to be viewed as individuals rather than as representatives of a family or a group. Here are some examples of how this value affects behaviours. 1. If a group of friends go to a restaurant, everyone wants to pay their own way. In other words, they want to have separate checks and not be someone's guest. 2. In friendships, which seem to initially develop more quickly in the US than in other cultures, the Americans may feel uncomfortable if you give them more help than they need. This is a tendency to draw back and see dependency as weakness. In some ways, the stress on the individual rather than the family or group has led to a more informal society. Sometimes this lack of formality is viewed by members of other cultures as a sign of lack of respect. But that is not the intention in the American value system. This informality is even more predominant on the university campus than in other segments of society. 
Some ways in which you might see this value expressed in behaviours are: one, you will generally be on a first name basis with other students, in spite of any age differences; two, dress is very informal on campus; three, language is informal and sometimes confusing. Phrases like "see you later" and "drop by any time" are not meant literally. They are informal ways of saying goodbye. Americans are direct. Honesty and frankness are more important to Americans than saving face. They may bring up impolite conversation topics, which you may find embarrassing, too controversial, or even offensive. Americans are quick to get to the point, and do not spend much time on formal social amenities. This directness encourages Americans to talk over disagreements and to try to patch up misunderstandings themselves, rather than ask a third party to mediate disputes. It is particularly interesting to see what behaviors have culturally become associated with straightforwardness. One, a firm handshake somehow has come to be interpreted as a sign of sincerity. Two. Looking at a person when you speak to him or her gives an indication of honesty. Three, in a question of honesty versus politeness, honesty wins. It is considered better to refuse graciously than to accept an invitation and not go. Four, you will be taken at your word. If you refuse food the first time it is offered, to be polite, it may not be offered again. An American will not know that your initial refusal is politeness. Great value is attached to time in the U.S. Punctuality is considered an important attribute. As with all values, there are different rules of acceptability in different cultures. In the U.S., you should be present for school or business appointments at the exact time agreed upon. In social appointments. You can arrive ten to fifteen minutes after the agreed-upon time, without giving offence. If you are invited somewhere for dinner and are more than fifteen minutes late, you will need to offer an apology and an explanation. A phone call explaining you have been detained and will be late will save face for you and patience for the other person. Americans also value achievement and competition. The American style of friendly joking or banter, of getting the last word in, and the quick and witty reply, are subtle forms of competition. Although such behavior is natural to Americans, you may find it overbearing or disagreeable. Americans are obsessed with records of achievement in sports, and sports awards are often displayed in their homes. Also, sometimes books and movies are judged not so much on quality. But on how many copies are sold, or on how many dollars of profit are realized. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.